Good morning, church. Good morning. We'll start out with our scriptural reading. For even here unto were he called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Excuse me. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. I read to you from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 and 22 and 23. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning with bowed down heads, thanking and praising you for such a good God. Father, we just want to thank you. You brought us here safely today. You saw us through the storm. Everything about you is good. And we just love you today. We want to ask you to bless in a mighty way. Bless those that are here, those that are lost, those on vacation, those in bereavement, those in their sick rooms, those that are incarcerated. Just bless today. We bless your name. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds to your word. Give us an understanding so that we can learn more about you and do your will. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our lesson today, lesson number seven, Nehemiah combats derision and danger. Coming out of Nehemiah chapter four, verses one through nine. We'll go around the room and read the scriptures. You ready? Okay, we'll start with Sister Michelle. And if you would read the first two verses. When Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring can they bring the stones back to life from from those heaps of gold, burned as they are? Amen. Thank you. Then we'll ask Sister Delana if she would read three. Now Tahoba. Tobiah. Tobiah, the Ammonite. The Ammonite. Ammonite was beside him and he said, Whatever they build, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O oh, our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Amen. Amen. Sister Yvonne, would you read verses 5 and 6? And come not there in and let their sin be washed out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before their builders. So built we the wall, and all the walls joined together to the half thereof. For the people had a mind of work. Amen. For two work. And Sister John, verse 7. Valid. And valid. And valid. 
Tobiah. Tobiah and the Arabians. Arabians and Ammonites and the Ashurites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very wrong. Amen. And Deacon Ridgeway, would you read the last two verses? Eight and nine. The last two. Yeah. I guess I got the one. Less than seven, okay. And conspired all of them to uh, together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a uh, watch against the day and the night. Because, because of him. Amen. Amen. So, our lesson is in three parts. Enemy, mockery, prayer, and perseverance. Enemy threats and more prayer. The time is 445 B.C. And the place is <laughs> Jerusalem. Today's aim to realize that those who speak up for the Lord will be ridiculed by others. The principle to show that God will bless and <coughs> empower those who absorb the ridicule of the enemy. And the application to determine to seek the applause of heaven rather than the accolades of man. Uh, I don't know how many figured it out when they were studying for this lesson, but you get a whole lot more if you had gone back and even started at chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Chapter 2, chapter 3, Never mind about all the names that you couldn't pronounce. <laughs> Just get the gist of what it was talking about. It was a, in chapter three, the message was clear. It didn't matter who was doing what, but they were doing. And that's all you needed to get from chapter three. And our lesson ended in verse nine of chapter four. But had you finished the rest of that chapter and in your related scriptures, it tells you Nehemiah 2, 9 through 20, and chapter 6, 1 through 15. And 1 through 15 would have given you the end of the story. Because when we read down to chapter 9, you kind of feel like you were left hanging. But you know, it's an end to the story. So, we'll just start here. And I want to talk about Nehemiah, first of all. Because you find out in chapter 2, two that Nehemiah was the cup bearer for um, King Artaxerxes of Persia. And the cup bearer, that was a very prestigious job, so to say. A cup bearer was more or less a protector of the king. He was the one that did the testing of the wine before the king drank it. Okay, the king, it had been known in history where servants and different people tried to attack and kill the king by giving them something. So this was a very trustworthy job that Nehemiah had. But then some delegates came through and Nehemiah got a word about what was going on in Jerusalem. And it upset him very deeply. That was his homeland. And so time had really passed 
from last week's lesson, uh, it tells us that with this lesson today, we jump ahead several hundred years. Okay, so time had passed. And land, in the period that followed Judah's 70 year exile in Babylon. So Judah had been held in captivity for 70 years. And, but the Lord had told them, after the 70 years, you will be free and you can go back home. So when they were freed, they went back. And of course, they found the lands in ruin. Okay, everything was tore up. They started out building the temple or rebuilding the temple and other little stuff, but it wasn't completed. And when Nehemiah heard the state that the place was in, he was affected. He said, I need to get back there and do something. <laughs> well, maybe I need to talk louder. <laughs> so, <laughs> a good laugh is always a good thing, right? Yeah. So anyway, Nehemiah went to King Artaxerxes and asked him, because the king saw him or his countenance and knew something was wrong with him and asked Nehemiah, well, what troubles you? Just to paraphrase. And finally, he told him, or asked him, he made a request, would you please let me go back to my homeland and help to build this wall, okay? And he needed things in order to be able to get there. He needed letters written, because when you went through the land, you could get stopped and you wouldn't be able to go through. So the king wrote him some letters, gave it to him, and that way with him and his servants or whoever went with him were able to go through all this land to get where he wanted to go. Okay? So he gets there. And then, you know, we talked about it last week in Hezekiah, how Hezekiah rallied the people. We have to learn how to rally the people to get people to want to join in and help, okay? And so that's what Nehemiah did. But there's always resistance. You'll find in a lot of your endeavors, especially when you're working for the Lord, the enemy is going to come and try to discourage you. So in, in chapter 4, Verse 1. And verse 1, remember, is following chapter 3. Because here in chapter 3, it talks about how all the people got together and helped. So, but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built it, the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. So now Sam Ballard here was a non-Jew, but he was in that area. Actually, he was soon to become governor of Samaria, and he had other people connected to him. When you hear about Sam Ballard, you hear about Tobiah, you hear about Geshem, these were all enemies of the Israelites, of the Jews. So, but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built it the wall, he was wroth. He was upset. And he took great indignation and mocked the Jews. He made fun of them. And you know, it's hard to work with people ridiculing you making fun of you, trying to discourage you. And that's when you have to show some strength because a weak person can't stand under ridicule. They're so quick to give up. 
They talking about me. They laughing at me. They are picking at me. That's what we used to do when we were kids. But when you grow up, hopefully, if you come up in the admonition of the Lord, you got some strength because you're not depending on your own strength. You're depending on the Lord. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria, talking about San Palin, and said, what do these people do? In other words, what do they think they're doing? Okay? Will they fortify themselves? That's the question that Sam Ballard is asking. Do they think they're going to build up and fortify themselves against us? Will they sacrifice? Will they make sacrifices? Will they make an end in a day? Do they think they're going to build up everything in one day? These were all the questions they were asking. Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Remember everything was torn down, rubbish was all over the place. I could imagine bricks and things thrown all around. But hey, when you're trying to rebuild, you're going to go through those bricks. You find any good bricks, you're going to use them. Now, Tobiah, the Ammonite, was by him. He was with Sanballat. And he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. <laughs> Tease him. In other words, if they build up a wall, we don't have to worry about it. It's going to be so weak that if a fox run across it, it's going to fall down. This is all of the ridicule and the teasing that they went through. Enemy mockery. Okay? I can stop right there and ask if anybody has any comments, anything. Yeah, I mean, when you were talking about um, uh, the first few chapters in Nehemiah, um, I, I was thinking uh, the, the, what they used to call Nehemiah the second book of Ezra. Mm -hmm. Ezra so, mm -hmm. and so forget the, they, 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 they did build, they did uh, rebuild part of the temple mm -hmm. in Ezra, but you have to read Ezra to get that. Right. But they didn't finish the job. The, the job wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. And so now that Nehemiah is there to finish it. But Something that was said, and I had to research this, in Nehemiah, or in the, in the earlier chapters, mm -hmm. in the earlier chapters it said, and the queen was with, was there. And I'm like just thinking, the queen? And I couldn't figure it out until I looked at some Bible uh, helps. Mm -hmm. And the queen was Queen Esther. Queen Esther. So the funny thing about it is, I said, oh, this is out of sequence. <laughs> Yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting when interesting. I found that out. Yeah. Just in case anybody else wanted to read, uh, read, read it, and they may have uh, said, well, who's this queen? Right. And actually, Queen Esther is going to be in the next. That, next that's what I'm thinking. So I said, wait a minute. Isn't it out of, out of, out of order? <laughs> right. Right. So, but, you know, people would do anything to interfere yeah. with your project. Sometimes we see it right within the church. You know, you're trying to have a program, and you know you can't satisfy everybody. Right, right. And so you ask one preacher just about beg somebody to be the mistress of ceremony, and then finally when you get somebody, is somebody else out there talking. Hmm, they could ask me, well, why didn't you volunteer? Mm -hmm. You know. So you have to learn to just use what you have. If somebody got to beg you to do something, then maybe you'll never get the opportunity. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us don't beg. And you shouldn't have to beg when you're working for the Lord. That's right. That's right. Here so the, the next section, prayer and perseverance. Verses 4 through 6. Now here Nehemiah 
he was known for praying. Several times when I was studying, I could see where he was definitely a man of prayer. And he, here he is praying. He says, Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Here he's praying against the enemy. And you know how we are, we're taught that we should not pray against the enemy. You know, we're supposed to ask the Lord to bless us. Mm -hmm. But here we, and, and this is not the first time we've seen this. In past lessons, other lessons, there have been prayer like this. And God still answers prayer. You know, he tells us to forgive and everything, but... In certain circumstances, and, and I like the way this prayer goes on because Nehemiah turns it off of him and puts it on God. He says in verse 5, and cover not their iniquity. In other words, no, don't cover their iniquity. And let not their sin be blotted out from before, before thee, for they have provoked thee to anchor before the builders. See, Nehemiah turns it on to God. He said, they have provoked thee. You know, it's all about God's grace. You know, it's about God's honor. So he said, no, that they against you, God. So, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. And I tell you, that's the only way you're going to get something done. Mm -hmm. Is if the people have a mind to work. Mm -hmm. If you got a lot of talking going on and people nitpicking it going on, you won't get anything much done. Everybody has to get on one accord mm -hmm. and work together in order for these projects to be done. So here, Nehemiah says that they did. We built the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half. And when I saw that about unto the half, I said, now what is this? But they're saying that they had built the wall to the height of half of what it had been. Was it complete? No. But that's how far they had gotten, and everything at this point was joined. All of the gaps and everything. Because remember, people were working for, from all different areas. Mm -hmm. Building up and making things complete. Now I could just kind of imagine saying valid. Because at first, they remember they were joking mm -hmm. and ridiculing them. And saying just let them go on because it's not going to hold up. But as they kept watching. See, you have to get to a point where you ignore the ridicule. The ridicule made them strong. The more they were on the, the outsiders were teasing, they just kept on working. Okay, and finally, Sam Ballard and them looking like, well, I'll be. They're doing this. Of course, why do you think Sam Ballard didn't want them? to work on the wall. Because what? Because he wanted the land? I mean. <laughs> well, in a sense, he was in a position to take, take the land. Right. Okay. Um, they're, nat they're all natural enemies anyway. They're all nat they do not want to see the Jews in any way, shape, or form prosper. Right. And without those, with those walls torn down, they had no protection. You know, the, the walls, in order for them to be, when they're fortified, you have protection. The enemy just can't run over you. See, so you got some protection. At least a chance to fight them off. And they didn't want to see that because as long as the walls were down, hey, anytime they decided to go in there and run over them, they could. 
But they built the walls, and they and he prayed and told the Lord, "Don't let them get away with nothing." <laughs> hey, let them. He Nehemiah even prayed for them to be let them be overtaken and put in captivity, just like our people was, right. and see how they come out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something else for those, and those armies, hey, Israel went into captivity a few times, mm -hmm. and to, for, for an army to come in and overtake the people, drag them to their land, mm -hmm. imprison them, you know they tore down everything when they came in there and took them. Stole everything, anything worth anything, they took it. So now finally you've been freed to go back. But you got to go back and start working. You got to start rebuilding. You need some place to worship. Okay? You need some place to live. Everything has to be, and it was a big job. Mm -hmm. It was a big job. And the only difference in Nehemiah and the rest of those people was that he decided to do something about it. You know, we could sit around and complain and complain and nothing will ever get done. But somebody has to stand up and say, we can do this. And he rallied the people. They listened to him and he motivated them, and they all got together to rebuild. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, questions, prayer, and perseverance. You know, they tell us that, well, it's not they. It's in the Word. Man should always pray. Mm -hmm. And so when we hear that and understand what that means, that means we should pray in all instances about everything. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're looking for an apartment, pray about it. Mm -hmm. Ask God to lead you and guide you. If you're looking to buy a home, pray. Because that's not easy. You going out there trusting in man, they'll put you in a dump. All they want to do is sell you a house. Okay? When you want to buy a car, that's another one. You're going out there to face man. You got to haggle and go on with him about price. You know, you trying to tell them what you want. They showing you something else. They don't know what you can afford. They don't care. And they, they just want to make a sale. That's right. You have to pray about it. People calling you on the phone all the time, mm -hmm. telling you about renewing your warranty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some folks don't even have a car. They get a call about renewing a warranty. You need to pray about it. So many times we jump up and make quick decisions, mm -hmm. and later on we're sorry about it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we didn't ask God. Mm -hmm. You know what that reminds me of? When those, uh, when, when the, the enemies of the Jews, were when, the, when, they, when the enemies of the Jews tricked the Jews into signing a peace treaty. Yeah. <laughs> with the spoiled bread and all that. Yes. <laughs> Thinking that they came from a long yeah. way away. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they had to endure with those and, people. And, and, and uh, uh, Joshua never consulted the Lord. Never. And that was something that weighed on him, yeah. too. Because sometimes we make decisions that we can't undo. We just got to suffer with it. Yes. Sister Joan. Now it's like, um, whatever you do, we should pray. Everything. Because for one thing, God has his plan for you. And you have a plan. But you don't know what his plan is. You don't and know. You don't say, know. whatever your will is, vacations, whatever, because you don't know. You don't know. He may change that. That's right. You know, you want to hope that he's in agreement with whatever you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, we have to learn that because we see it all the time. 
all the time, making decisions without God. Without God, that's the truth. We got to learn to put him first. first. Deacon Mike. Also, the last part of uh, the last line in uh, 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 verse 6, for the people had a mind to work. When we were all focused on, when we, were, when we all had on one accord, Focus on the job that and we're doing this for the Lord. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that can stop us. No. There's nothing. And even all this ridicule and everything didn't stop them. They continued on because they had a they were focused. They had a mind to work. They had a mind to get this project done. Mm -hmm. And they did it too. Not in the day like they were being mocked mm -hmm. in uh in the in the first in the first verse. But they got it done and it was a. Uh, Big job, and it did it. They did it in less than two months. They sure did. Mm -hmm. They sure did. But when they did it, they did it. They did it. They did it. But when they did it, 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 it continued to call on God. So this is you. So they, 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 they bucking you now. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, he was the hey, He was whipping it on God. You know what I mean? God, you know he's gonna come back with you know with his message. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When we uh, talk about that progress on the wall, verse 6, Nehemiah's prayer was answered in the most telling way. Mm -hmm. The work went on, mm -hmm. proving <laughs> the emptiness of the enemy's tongues. The entire wall around the city was joined together, mm -hmm. linked up in a unified structure until the half thereof. That somewhat puzzling phrase was simply telling us that the builders have managed to restore the entire wall to half its original height. They still had a lot of work ahead of them, but they had made incredible progress in an astonishing short time. In a short period of time. The last section, enemy threats and more prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. So they were angry again when they heard that they were making progress and everything was coming together. And they conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. So they still weren't ready to let them alone. <laughs> Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And so here in this section, we see, we see that the enemy is still making threats. But Nehemiah says it didn't trouble them. He said, nevertheless, anyway, we made our prayer unto our God. And with that, and I think I've mentioned it many times before. When we pray to God and ask for something, and he is a God that will answer our prayer. It's not always what we want to hear, but he'll answer it. But just know one thing, we have work to do too. It's not about praying to God and then sitting back saying, okay, Lord, now I'm just going to wait. <laughs> it does not work that way. It's always some work that we can be doing. And we see here where Nehemiah, it says, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch. Mm -hmm. We set a watch against them day and night. In other words, and in our reading, it says, Nehemiah took half the men to work, and the other half of the men were watching. They looked out for the enemy 24 hours a day, day and night. 
watch it. So now, that gives the workers a little bit of sense of security. Mm -hmm. We can go on and work without worrying about the enemy overtaking us because we have people watching out for us. See, that's the work that they had to do. God was going to do his job. Mm -hmm. But Nehemiah set up some watchmen so that his men could continue to work without fear. Now, let's look at chapter 6. Nehemiah. Mm That's in our related scriptures, uh, verse 1 through 15. Sam Ballad conspires to oppose the rebuilding. What do you say? Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Now it came to pass. When Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. And you know, when you looked in chapter 3, it, it spoke of all these different gates you know, and how they had to be repaired. But he's saying he had not. See, it still was a lot of work to be done. He had to set the doors up. Hmm. And um, that Sam Ballad and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. See, so here they are sending for Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. But he said he already figured they wanted to do him some harm. Mm -hmm. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Or why should I stop working whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this story. Four times. They kept messing with him, trying to get him to come down. And I answered them after the same manner. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> then, Sam, then sent Sam Ballard, his servant, unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. They're very determined people. Mm -hmm. Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. Now see here, now they decided to lie. Mm -hmm. They got a report that <laughs> Nehemiah and the Jews are thinking about rebelling. For which cause thou buildest the wall? That's the reason why you're building the wall. Mm -hmm. That thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. And now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. See, so now they're threatening him that they're going to report something to the king, but he already got permission mm -hmm. from Artaxerxes. Mm -hmm. They're using all these different tactics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. <laughs> Verse 8. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done 
as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. You're just making up stuff. Okay? For they are made, for they all made us afraid, saying, their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. Now therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hands. He's still leaning on the Lord. Strengthen my hand. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, or Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mahatabal, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. You have to be careful who you trust. And I said, listen to Nehemiah, should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life. I will not go in. And lo, I perceive that God had not sent him. Mm -hmm. See how God, he'll let you know if you depend on him. This man is trying to fool him to come into the temple. Like he's going to be safe from somebody that's trying to <coughs> flee. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, I'm not coming. <laughs> and lo, I perceive that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. You can buy some people with money, with gifts with sweet talk. Lean and depend on God and wait for an answer. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin and that they might have matter for an evil report that they might reproach me. Verse 14. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and sent ballot according to these their works. He's still telling them, look at what they're doing, God. Yeah. And on the prophetess, though a diet, and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. Verse 15 is our answer. So the wall was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month. Elo in 50 and 2 days. 52 days and the wall was finished. Praise God. Praise God. Nehemiah combats derision and danger. He rallied the people. The people had a mind to work. They were on one accord and they ignored the ridicule, and they, they kept right on working until the job was done. And that's what we have to learn. When you're working for the Lord, work for the Lord. Keep Him first and foremost in your mind, in your heart, in your prayers. He will answer your prayers. Enemy threats and more prayer. Any questions or comments? There was something in, um, in uh, uh, just outside of the, our reading um, mm -hmm. about um, the constant threats that were, that were overcome. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, you, 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 touched on, you touched on a little bit that they had to watch, but they also, each guy, each worker, they had, they, they had their sword with them. Mm -hmm. uh, it says 18. For the builders, is this 4.18, I'm sorry. Nehemiah 4.18. For the builders, every one 
had his sword girded by his side. So it wasn't that they were just they were just depending on the watchmen to just watch and fight for them. They were all ready. They were all they ready were to ready. go down. <laughs> they were ready. And that's the thing about it. They were all ready, and they were ready and willing. And obviously, with a sword by their side, by their side, they were able. And so that's why they never got attacked. And also going down to twenty, it says, "In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us. Our God shall fight for us." You can't. You can't fight God. You can't. You can't fight God. When you start messing with God, you better watch out, right? Because and, and and like I said, this prayer was really special because he turned it off of him and said, God, they're at you. <laughs> you know, that's why Nehemiah went there. Because he said, with everything torn down like it was, hey, that was God's city, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, we got to build this up. It can't be left like this. If we look, and we do have a little time, let's just read through the rest of um, chapter 4 because it won't interfere with anything Deacon Mike will be teaching on Esther next week. So our lesson ended with 4 and 9. So we could finish up with the reading. But in the 10th verse, of Nehemiah 4 and 10. It says, And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places whence he shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And see, that's what we have to remember. Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord. The Lord is our protector. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to naught that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows and the Habergeons and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which built it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other held a weapon. For the builders, every one, had his sword girded by his side, and so built it. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye there unto us. Our God shall fight for us. When you got God fighting for you, you don't have a thing to worry about. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, 
At the same time said I unto the people, let everyone with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that everyone put them off for washing. You know, we have to learn to be good workers. I have read something um, this morning, and it was saying something like people have, all they do is sit around and complain, you know, when it comes to work. And then they'll say, oh Lord, here we go again. And somebody said, don't worry about it, it's Monday. You know, we blame a bad day, work day on Monday, okay? And then they call Wednesday hump day because you're in the middle of the week now and you're just about to get over the hump. And the only day that a worker is really overjoyed with is Friday. <laughs> at the end of the week, you know, sitting around the the water cooler ain't doing much of nothing but complaining. But we have to learn to be good workers, especially when we're working for the Lord. You know, anything we're doing unto Him, we don't want to halfway do it. We don't want to complain about doing it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. That's simple. Just don't do it. If somebody asks you to do something you don't want to, say, really, I don't care to do that. And it's all right. Go here. You know, I used to talk about, or I mentioned that at the beginning of the lesson, about uh, being a mistress of ceremony. And I remember I was asked maybe two or three times. But that was something I didn't want to do. And I said it. I don't care to do it. It's okay. You know, nothing to get upset about. Nothing to get angry with me about. I just don't want to do that. And that's fine. Instead of me getting up there halfway doing it. Because somebody asked. That's right. You know. That's all right. So. But whatever we do for the Lord, we want to give it our all. Mm -hmm. And know that we're not doing it alone. Mm -hmm. It's always somebody to help us. Amen. If we ask for help. Always. So any questions or comments, I want to, as I always do, encourage us to get ready for next week. And I did mention that it's going to be a lady in the house next week. <laughs> Esther. Okay? Esther goes before the king. So let's read uh, the chapter that's involved. Let's read through the related scriptures. Let's be prepared to discuss the lesson. Mike likes for you to Discuss. Right. See, he, he likes for you to just not challenge him. Help me. <laughs> Help him. I don't okay. know everything. <laughs> Add to it. Yeah. Uh, and if you've got a question, yeah. you can ask the question. You know, we'll do our best to try to answer. And if we don't have the answer, we can find it. Yeah. So. I was going to say one thing. I like how you know, my turn it back. Yes. What I do, I turn things back to him too. Yes. When I want something, I go on the word. I say, you said, you said on yep. the word that da, da, and you, you cannot lie. Your word don't go back so mine. Right. You yeah. said, and that's how I do it with him. Yes. And so I turn it back to him because he can't lie. Right. And I know he's going to do what he said. He's going like to do it. I like to do it that way because like we go back. I'm back him. I like it. It's like a two-way we talk. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's what he wants from us. You know what Sister Joan just said? It makes me, I, 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 I laugh and smile at that, that, that saying because... What does it say? If the word dwells in you. Now, if the word didn't dwell in her, mm -hmm. she couldn't go to God and say, you said. Right. She can't go. She can't do that. Right. She knows that's there. So there's that it's there for her purpose. Mm -hmm. For God to God for God right. to for for you to research it, get it into your spirit, and to use it. Mm -hmm. And when you use it and say, you remind God, like yeah. he does not have, like he has a short memory. Mm -hmm. No, he does not. He, uh, 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 you see, he, that word is in you, mm -hmm. and so you know that. That's for you. Mm -hmm. And that is, I, I love that. <laughs> I love that. trouble with the names the scripture was all about me all week today all weekend it was all about me because I kept on asking because I couldn't do it on my own mm -hmm. so I kept on asking even when I couldn't shut up I asked him shut me up please shut me up well, be careful <laughs> <with> that. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I have to ask him to shut me up because I need to walk away. Well, ask Give me the strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask me to calm you down. Yeah. You know, because you, know, you yeah, have a tendency to be a little hyper. Mm -hmm. You have to have patience. Yeah. But he, he's a promise keeper. And he has made promises that he's going to keep. Oh, yeah. And I one know. of them is that he is going to look out for his people. Mm -hmm. When we see these lessons like we did today, mm -hmm. all we have to do, like you say, is put yourself in the place yes. exactly. and say, if you did it for them, exactly. I know you you're doing do it for me. Exactly. That's right. That's one thing I loved about Nehemiah. Uh, when I studied him before, it was interesting to see the attacks that came upon Nehemiah comes on us. Mm -hmm. The devil tries to stop us from doing things. Mm -hmm. And knowing that there's a reward from us, from God, at the end of it, right. the devil keeps, he's so resentless, he keeps coming at you in different forms, in different ways. But our faith, like Nehemiah's faith, was so strong, mm -hmm. could nothing shake him, could nothing stop him. Right. And the one thing about it, even when the traps were set, God gave him discernment. Mm -hmm. To be able to know what's coming and know I got you. That's right. And he do the same for us. We got to remember Nehemiah's faith, character, mm -hmm. and his determination. Yeah. That's, That's right. what every believer yeah. should have. Yeah. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. So true. Yeah. Uh, Deacon Prince. Mm -hmm. If you would this